Thirds, what are they and how do we simplify them? In this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to thirds and very quickly, we're going to move on to doing these quite complicated expansions, okay? So, in the next lesson, we'll do rationalizing denominators, which in the uh, topic of thirds is the bulk of the marks, but you need to understand the basics. So, I've got a few tasks here that I need us to complete before we do that. So the first task is which one of these are thirds? Now, what is a third? A third is a mathematical expression, an expression meaning it doesn't have any equal signs, it's just a number, so it's a mathematical expression that contains an irrational root. What is an irrational root? Generally speaking, it most commonly involves a square root, but it can be a cube root, fourth root, fifth root, etc. Generally speaking, we like, well, GCSEs anyway, we use a square root that cannot be simplified, whereby the number can't be rewritten without this root, okay? So, for example, root two. Well, two is not a square number, so you cannot root it to give us an integer. So when I say an irrational number, an irrational number is a number that cannot be represented as a fraction, where the numerator and denominator are integers. For example, three quarters is rational because three is an integer, four is an integer. Even if I said minus three quarters, that is a rational number. Minus three is an integer, four is an integer. However, pi is irrational because if I write it over one, which a lot of students say, one is an integer, but pi is not an integer. <coughs> Sorry, so that means that this is irrational. So same thing with root two. When you guys all decide to do A-level maths with me and officially join the Lung Gang, I will prove this to you, that root two is irrational. So root two is a third. Root four is not a third because four can be rewritten as two squared, which cancel out and we are left with two. We all know that already anyway. The root of four is two. So four, root four is not a third. Just because you can write it with a root over it doesn't make it a third. This is a third because five is not a square number. We cannot possibly rewrite this without the root, okay? It will always appear. So this is not a third. And finally, three root 25. Now three root 25 between the three and the, 20, and the root, sorry, is a multiplication symbol. This is literally saying three times whatever the root of 25 is, three times five, 15. So this is not a third. I don't know why I crossed this, this is a third. <laughs> okay, I was trying to say you can't write that as an integer, I'm bugging. Anyway, that definitely is a third. Okay, task one done. We understand the concept of a third, and when something is a third and when something is not a third. The next most important thing we need to understand is when we multiply a third by itself. So using your index rules, what is root x times root x? Now when we did our introduction or when we did fractional powers, we said the root determines the fractional power. Now in these roots, there is a two here which we don't need to write down because this is just common notation, okay? So this is saying x to the power of a half. Remember, the denominator tells you which root you're taking. So this is x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half. When you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add the powers. A half plus a half is one. Interesting. So when you take a third and you multiply it by itself, we are left with x to the power of one, which is just x. Now that makes sense because this means you're squaring the third. When you square a third, it just gets rid of the root. So for example, root two times root two is two. Root three times root three is three. I could go on forever like this. Root 99 times root 99 is 99. Okay, very important concept in thirds, and it's one that we use when we rationalize denominators as well. Okay, task three, we want to simplify these thirds. I'm going to do that over here. I'll call it T3. 
Now, in the non-calculator paper, when you simplify these thirds, what I recommend you do is write down square numbers. So what are the square numbers? One squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, and you can keep going. It just depends how much you want. To simplify a third means to recognize that actually there are square numbers that go into these numbers. For example, root of 50. 50 can be rewritten as 25 times 2. Okay? And 8, so and 8 can be written as 4 times 2. Hey, I know how to root 25. The root of 25 is 5. Lots of root of 2. Okay? So essentially what we're doing here is we're distributing that root like this. And the reason we can do that is, remember this rule from index rules? We're doing a to the power of n, b to the power of n. Okay? So when I have 25 times 2 rooted, that's power half, that same as doing 25 to the power of a half, which is rooting the 25, and 2 to the power of a half. So you root each number only if it's multiply, okay? Only if it's multiply. If it said plus, it doesn't work, okay? So same concept with this 4 one. We have plus here. Remember that plus is on the outside of the root, so it's not being affected. Root of 4, 2, then root of 2. Now this is just standard algebra. I have 5 root 2s. And I'm adding another two root twos. I have seven root twos. 5x plus 2x is 7x. All right, part B. I have 12 root 12. And I know 12 is 4 times 3. Minus root 75. Now 75 is 25 times 3. Now here we have to be careful, 12, root of 4, root of 4 is 2. But I'm not just going to write the 12 next to it, right? That doesn't make any sense. Between the 12 and this is a multiplication symbol, we're doing two lots of that. So root of 4 is 2, and we have the root of 3, which is irrational. Minus root of 25 is 5, and then we have root of 3. 12 times 2 is 24. Root 3 minus 5 root 3. 24 minus 5 is 19. Okay? And that's how we simplify thirds. Cool. Now let's go on to task 4, expanding brackets. The expansion of brackets is very simple. We just apply the same rules as we do expanding x and expanding y and all that good stuff. It's just now we are applying it to numbers. So part A. Root 2 times root 2 minus 1. So I need to do root 2 times root 2. Now we know what that is. Root x times root x is x. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Another way you could do it is you can use your index rules and say, okay, they both have the same power, so we multiply within. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2. Okay, so either way you get to 2, but I really want you guys to get used to saying root 2 times root 2 is 2, root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then we get root 2 times minus 1 is minus root 2. Now let's get to the big boy. We have 3 root 3 minus 2 root 2 times 2 root 2, 2 root 2 plus root 3. Right. Root 3 root 3 times 2 root 3. Just like when you, if I give you guys this, look at this, if I gave you 2xy times 3xy squared, you would do 2 times 3 and you would say 6. You would do x times x, x squared. You would do y times y squared is y cubed. You multiply the letters and numbers separately and in terms of the letters, it's which letters are similar or of the same property, okay? Same thing here. We multiply the integers and the thirds separately. Integers, letters, separately. So the way we do this 
is we're going to do 3 times 2, 6. Root 3 times root 2. They are different, so now we just have to multiply within the root. Root 3 times root 2 is root of 3 times 2, which is 6. Then, we have plus 3. Is there any other integer here? No, I mean, you could say 1. 3 times 1 is 3 anyway, so just 3. Then we have root 3 times root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. But remember, guys, do you write this? No, we know there's a multiplication symbol there. There is a multiplication symbol there. Okay, now we get this. So minus, minus, 2 times 2, 4. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. We've done that one already. Remember, we don't just write 42. There is a multiplication symbol between the integer and the third. Then finally, minus plus is minus 2, 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Lots of root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And for that reason, I don't even need that multiplication symbol. Just 2 root 6. And now we can simplify. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2, 1. 6 root 6 minus 2 root 6. I have 6 root 6s and I'm going to minus 2 of them. I'm left with 4 root 6 plus 9. My, wait, did I say 4 times 2 is 1? How? How? Oh, I did the calculation. I did 9 minus 8 is 1. Anyway, 9 minus 8 is 1, and I wrote it on top. But yeah, that's your answer, mate. 9 minus 8 is 1. Okay, now I'm double. Now I'm getting paranoid that I've done something wrong, but I haven't. So guys, that is an introduction to thirds. If you learned something, I'd really appreciate it. If you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in my GCSE maths courses, there is a link in the description to find out more. And feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.